Fight scenes. Characters fighting. If you think about it, this is the cornerstone of all entertainment. You have all these characters and you sell them. And do you really believe that little Timmy's going to have his action figures on the shelf? Well, well, actually, it, it depends on who it is. Like, if, if it was Namor figure, then I would probably never want to play with that ever again in my entire life. But the reality is that most directors view fight scenes as an afterthought, which is surprising because you would think that these big budget corporate made superhero movies would be seen as dumb action. But most of the time, these directors want to focus on their $10 story and not put any thought into their fight scenes. You look at last year's The Boys season three. When you think the boys, what do you think about? You might say the gore, the twist on the superhero genre, or maybe the web of characters and storylines. This is probably also what the creators think about when writing the show. It's based off the idea of an asshole god with all the power. So the boys get another god and they themselves get superhero drugs. So what does this lead up to? A shitty fight scene. And listen to me, a lot of people like the boys. I like the boys. But this scene feels like absolutely no effort went into making it good. Obviously you have some good stuff, but what, this entire show led up to a stiff boxing match? It feels like most directors just let their fight scenes happen and they could care less about the details. And if you think about it, that's crazy. Just like everything else, fight scenes also have their artistry. They can be great scenes. Now there's a lot of elements that build up a great fight scene. The first being. The meaning behind the fight scene is very important. I don't want to see some random fuckheads fighting each other and have the show expecting me to care. You guys just messed up. Indeed. Big time. <clears throat> this obviously has a lot to do with how good the character writing is. But I also want to mention the superhero movie trope where sometimes it starts off with the hero fighting some random bum for the pacing or something. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse starts off with Spot. And I remember finding it super annoying when this dude would just reappear into the movie. Like, guys, this is a huge multiverse movie. Can we please get to that instead of fighting this weirdo? And as it turns out, Spot was just the movie subverting our expectations because he turned out to be the main villain. But that didn't stop me from absolutely dreading him on the first viewing. And for the record, f fuck Spot. He's probably one of the least compelling villains I've ever seen. Tension is one of, if not the most important part of a fight scene. But I do say that loosely because it does honestly only work once on first viewing. I do firmly believe that inconsistencies will ruin the stakes and validity of what happens in the story. But even in a film as messy as Infinity War, I almost shit my pants when Iron Man got stabbed. But listen, this rooted from the idea that I was an Iron Man fanboy. And I don't know what I would feel if I watched it for the first time today, but I can say that Infinity War is one of the most brain dead movies when it comes to consistency. Slayer is always fun, but sometimes we want to play some capture the flag or maybe capture the, the wedding ring like Spider-Man 3. This is a pretty good example on how to introduce tension when obviously Spider-Man isn't going to die like 20 minutes into his own movie, but also it makes the fight scene more dynamic and exciting to watch because of that extra element of preserving Aunt May's ring. I feel like one of the best parts about Sam Raimi is that he actually gives a shit when it comes to camera work. Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness is one of the movies that people don't like. And look at the fight scenes. Look at how expressive and fluid they are. Contrast that to this shit. Every single serious drama movie has shitty fight scenes like this. Close up, shaky camera, impossible to watch, it's just mush, fuck you. Now guys, everyone knows that fight scenes are more than just two action figures getting smashed together. Fights are actually people slapping their arms and doing backflips at each other. When a Redditor says that a character is a hand-to-hand -hand combat expert, they actually mean that the character will throw goofy cartoon kicks. What you power scaling neckbeards have to realize is that you are a moron. And I've shown this video a couple times, but nobody has commented on it. But basically, it's a TikTok edit, which I didn't even know that these stupid ass videos were power scaling, but it's a power scaling video of Muhammad Ali versus Mike Tyson. <laughs> Not only do you idiots not realize that power scaling is the biggest waste of time imaginable, you still believed in your stupid ass criteria to judge a fucking boxing match off of it. It's already brain dead to use it on fictional superheroes, but on a fucking boxing match that can realistically be analyzed. Combat sports actually can be analyzed and predictions are regularly made with logic that actually matters. Like, why don't you dumbasses go ahead and bet $400 on a boxing fight with your shitty power scaling criteria? Go ahead, stupid fucks. The reality is that kung fu is not a combat sport. 
I would compare it more to gymnastics. So this shit, while it might look cool to some, isn't fathomable. Now when we talk about power levels, we're only talking about what's been introduced to the story up to that point. So when you have a character who's supposed to be powerful and then he's just on the level of a character, it's blatantly artificial and the fight scene loses all validity. However, this doesn't mean that a lesser character can't beat a more powerful character. It just has to make sense within the context. Now here's where a lot of people bring up Captain America vs Iron Man. And no, this is not a good example at all. The entire time Captain America wasn't doing anything special other than just breaking Iron Man's flight boots. But basically, the entire time Captain America and Bucky are just punching Iron Man and Iron Man is punching them. At some point in the fight, Captain America is just unloading on Iron Man and Iron Man's like, analyze his fight pattern. And first of all, how are you analyzing anything if you previously broke your scanner? And then what would you even be analyzing? Like Captain America here is just brawling. He's really not doing anything technical. And what do you even mean fight pattern? Is Captain America like a robot or something? So then Iron Man scans him and catches a punch and Captain America freezes for some reason and then he just beats him. But then Captain America slams him and then Iron Man gets neutralized from a slam? Are we watching the same MCU guys or like... and then Captain America mounts him? Does Captain America weigh like 10,000 pounds? A better example would be Spider-Man 3 where Peter uses sound to beat Venom instead of just overpowering him. Impact is probably my biggest problem with fight scenes. So many shots that clearly don't land and are visually half-assed. Daredevil is just disgusting with this. Now listen, I like the one shot scenes because it's cute, but it does not look finished. These shots do not land. He's straight up not landing these punches. It's the same thing here. These punches do not land. John Wick, dead ass. The first sequence in the fourth one is just not what I want to see from an action movie. The bullets are not real objects. The strikes don't land. So guys, the solution is gore. Seriously, invincible. The Boys, Last of Us, Suicide Squad. These are very notorious for how graphic their action is. People have talked about how it was only done for shock value and how disturbing it is. And truthfully guys, I think I might be a sick human being. The blood can seem over the top, but at the same time, it makes it feel like someone just got shot in the head. With Daredevil, I'm not sure if it's rated R or whatever it is for TV shows, but they do have some graphic stuff, but never really in the action. But in The Boys, when Butcher starts fucking banging a guy's head on the sink, it actually looks like he just killed a guy on camera. And then you have Invincible. People have drawn comparisons to Saturday morning cartoons, but I wish I could find another superhero cartoon like this. The fight scenes are freaking awesome. Every single hit lands with style and you know people get fucked up in this shit. Like that part when Mark is getting fucking annihilated, like damn dude. When I watched this for the first time, I felt the reality of what happened. Omni-Man now irredeemable and Mark having lost fucking teeth. Damn. Of course, this feeling was instantly ruined by Mark fully recovering off camera and then having an AI generated conversation with the random alien in space because this show is bad. But guys, you notice how all the fight scenes I give credit to in this video have their problems by the criteria. In some way or another, I don't think that we will ever see the perfect fight scene. It has impact, it has tension, it has incredible writing, killer ass music, consistent power levels where the fights rely on technique, game plans, and styles, and love clearly put into it. Kung Fu Panda is a movie about loving and embracing yourself. It's a simple message executed to such a high level. Everything in this movie feels like it was planned out perfectly. There are so many scenes in this movie that are fucking perfect. And one of the main objectives DreamWorks had in this movie was the fight scenes. And every single fight scene in this movie is genuinely incredible. You have a bridge scene where both sides use the ropes to their advantage, adding a new layer of depth to the scene. The Shifu fight is filled with so much fucking emotion. And then the final fight. Tai Lung to this point has been shown to be an incredible fighter. But guess what? Just like real life, Styles make fights and Poe wins by embracing his strengths. The greatness of this movie shines all throughout and when you watch it, you can't help but feel the greatness. I'm not hungry. Kung Fu Panda 1 though. Kung Fu Panda 3? Don't watch that movie. Thank you.